Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at uh, why economics does not have to be rocket science. And uh, that will give me a chance as well to let uh, you know that I have uh, a blog as well. It's Monaco64.net. I write a few articles there once in a while. I don't do it every day. It's more like uh, every other month. Sometimes I'll do it more than once a month. It depends. And uh, I will uh, also talk about an article very briefly that I wrote back in June last year in the blog. It's the best uh, article in terms of reads that I've had. I think about 11,000 people have looked at it. And it gives you my idea how I feel about what's going on in the world right now. Uh, I think it's better for me to uh, express myself through my blog than through uh, YouTube. I try to focus here on the monetary system, on the markets, on economics. So uh, before I do that, just like to say, I will look at the markets afterwards. This might take a little longer. Markets were interesting yesterday, but uh, so uh, before I go into the uh, economics, does not have to be rocket science. And I uh, wrote this about five days ago. This article is also going to be published in the Tyne Valley Express, which is a, a magazine in the north of England. Um, the editor there contacted me months ago. He watches the videos as well. He's a subscriber and uh, he wanted me to write for this uh, local uh, local magazine so that that's what's going to appear in their in their next publication uh, you can go there as well if you want to read the magazine itself you don't have to be in Tyne Valley in the northeast of the UK uh, you can be anywhere in the world they have some interesting articles so yes uh, the first uh, thing order of the day as i said just wanted to uh, show you that uh, this article and it's entitled the origins of the world economic forum go back to the third reich <laughs> so this uh, will tell you what i feel about what's going on the people who are involved in this uh, crisis that we've had actually i think the crisis started back in october 2019 when they had the uh, event 201. I think that's all part of it. So yeah, I'll put a link to this article in the description. So now let's go through my latest article. It's entitled, Economics uh, Does Not Have to Be Rocket Science. And you can see I, I've put a little uh, a picture there. It says Mises or Keynes, it's your choice. Mises, in my opinion, is freedom. And Keynes, of course, in my opinion, is one world communism. I don't even think it has to be an opinion. It, it is fact, really, but be as it may. So let, let's begin. Um, the topic of economics is often shrouded in mystery and arcane terms like GDP, marginal utility, money velocity, and many other terms that make the men or women on the street roll their eyes and completely ignore the subject. So in this article, we will be looking at the etymology or origin of the word economy. We will be looking at how and why the so-called economics profession has evolved and why, in my opinion, economics should be looked at more from a practical or real-world point of view. According to Wikipedia, the English words economy and economics can be traced back to the Greek words for house management, a composite word derived from the word for house, household, and manage, distribute, to deal, dispense, by way of the word uh, household uh, management. So when we leave our parents' homes to make our way in the world, we are creating our own economy. We need to earn an income through work. Uh, we will be paying rent for our shelter. We'll be paying uh, utility bills, uh, buying all the basic necessities, paying for transport, etc. So simply put, managing our household is our economy. 
Keeping track of our monthly outgoings and income is how we arrive at a budget. And ideally, if we would like to keep our household in order, we need to try to keep our budget at least balanced. Unfortunately, young economies will run a deficit or will have larger outgoings uh, than income and will have to resort to borrowing uh, the deficit, be it via credit cards or loans. And here I'm not encouraging young people to do that. I'm just saying that it can happen. Eventually, these young economies uh, mature and increase their income via promotion at work and frugality uh, and will even be able to start saving a surplus income. Ideally, by the time we reach a retirement age, our household or economy will have been managed well enough whereby we can live a comfortable life with almost no debts left to pay off and preferably a balanced budget. I would say also on the subject of retirement, I, I think that's very subjective. Yes, we are told by the by the government, by the powers that be, by the establishment that we need to save for our retirement and we all need to retire at a certain age. Uh, I think it's more up to the individual and it depends what the individual does. If uh, uh, the person wants to continue uh, to do what he loves throughout his um, uh, older age, I, I, I wouldn't see why you shouldn't do that, right? This concept of the economy or household management can be applied not only to our households, but to all kinds of other institutions like businesses, government, schools, universities, etc. It is here or in institutions outside family household that we have seen the concept of economics and good housekeeping be abused. I would say that the government or the state has exploited and twisted the concept of economics. A whole profession of economics has evolved with the patronage of the banking and government establishment in order to justify the twisting uh, of the original definition of the Greek term. We will now look at how the economics profession has divided the concept of economics in order to justify actions that would never make sense or produce favorable long-term outcomes for our own household economies. Uh, the main driver of this division was John Maynard Keynes, who is considered the founder of modern day uh, macroeconomics. With his magnum opus, The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money in 1936, Keynes created, in my opinion, uh, the division between the original concept of household management or microeconomics and the concept of the state running a nation's economy or macroeconomics. And uh, I didn't mention this in the uh, article, but... In the introduction to that book in 1936, the German version, Keynes said that uh, his ideas on the economy are better suited to a uh, authoritarian uh, run economy. So there you go. Uh, I didn't say it, he did. With the advent of the Great Depression in the 1930s, the stage was set for the general public to accept a bigger role for the state in the economy as economists like Keynes and others pointed to the economic collapse of the 1930s, which created huge unemployment and misery as a consequence of a free market that we could not trust. So yeah, they blamed it on the free market and that gave them the ammunition uh, to start more government intervention. Uh, the followers of Keynes and Keynes himself did not point to the fact that the roaring 1920s were triggered by the manipulation of interest rates of the free market, right? By the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, via the New York Fed in order to keep the British pound pegged to the pre-World War I uh, exchange rate to the U.S. dollar. As the Fed kept interest rates artificially low to help sterling, it triggered a real estate and stock market boom in the 1920s that led to the Wall Street crash of 1929. So yeah, that real estate uh, boom was down in Florida. 
Um, so there you go. Um, so by interfering in the free market uh, price of money or interest rate, the governments of the U.S. and the U.K. via their central banks actually helped plant the seeds of the Great Depression. There was another school of economics led by economists like Friedrich Hayek and Ludwig von Mises that argued that the economy and the markets should be allowed to function freely and that the state should not be involved in the economy. This is the Austrian school of economics view. They believe that markets, uh, which is basically people voluntarily dealing with each other throughout the economy, are better at determining what the price of goods, services, and labor should be. Their argument is, how can a dozen or so bureaucrat, bureaucrats in Whitehall know what is best for the local economy of Tyneside? So ever since the Great Depression, there has been a big debate in, in the economics world about free markets and Keynesian state-run economics. The Keynesian school has had the upper hand and put the macroeconomy in the hands of an ever more big government and interference in the free market. So we have had almost one century of continuous growth in the size of governments in the economy as government interference and spending has surged in order to make sure the free market is reined in. Prior to World War I, government spending was rarely more than 10% of GDP, while now it approaches almost 50% and has temporarily, with the pandemic, gone way over that level in the last 12 months or so. Unfortunately, the Keynesians don't think the state or government need to follow the original tenets uh, of the economy and good housekeeping like balancing uh, the books or even running a surplus. Keynesians don't care much that governments run endless budget deficits and that the national debt keeps growing and is never paid off. One should not be fooled into thinking that conservatives uh, and labor are any different when it comes to the macroeconomy. We are, of course, led to believe that the Tories believe in free markets and small government and that labor believes in a more Keynesian or socialist path for the economy. I would argue, though, that this political game is no more than a distraction to keep the general public or taxpayers under a heavy weight uh, of debt and taxation that only helps perpetuate Keynesian big government and the bankers' profits. It is the bankers, after all, who make huge fees from ever-growing issuance of debt that keeps the state involved in the economy. Is there then any hope for a freer and fairer economy in which governments act as a referee or arbiter of the rule of law and does not interfere in people's everyday life or economy? The good news is that there is, and it is called the free market economy, in which the size of government is kept to a minimum, taxation is low, regulation and red tape is a great deal less, and people are left alone to run their household, and the government is also expected to run a tidy ship of state with a balance book and very little debt. It is up to each one of us to decide whether we want to live at the expense of the government, really our fellow men and women, or whether we would like to make our own way in the world. The choice is yours, Keynes or the Austrian school. So there you go. Uh, that's the article. I'll put a link to it below uh, in the description and you can read it yourself as well. Uh, yeah, make sure you share as well with friends. Uh, not only the article, but this video as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, think about subscribing. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. So it's 8.42 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold at 17.74. It's up about $3. Yes, yesterday I wasn't surprised by the move lower when the U.S. came in. Uh, one positive thing about the move in gold yesterday is that uh, we tested uh, that 1766 level, which was really important uh, back in um, the beginning of the year. 
It was a key support. Uh, and right now it's a key support again. Uh, today overnight, uh, the low has been 1765.50. So you can see how important that was. Was there manipulation of the market? I think so, but we shouldn't uh, really worry about it in the longer term. Um, they can't keep uh, their currencies propped up for much longer. And what that means is they can't keep uh, gold and silver suppressed for much longer. So silver uh, this morning is outperforming, which is a good sign. Yesterday it was underperforming and I said it was a dangerous, a dangerous sign, and it proved to be. Uh, right now, we're up 23 cents at 26.05, up almost 1%. Uh, the uh, stock markets I saw, they had uh, small drops yesterday in percentage terms. One thing I've noticed, though, is like uh, not only the NASDAQ hasn't really followed or led the markets in the last month or two, but also the... Uh, the Russell 2000, the small caps, that seems to be forming a, a big head and shoulder top, as you can see here. And that's not very encouraging when you have the Russell and the NASDAQ uh, not really confirming uh, the S&P uh, and, and the Dow. So uh, this morning, uh, the Dow futures is up 40 points. NASDAQ 100 futures is up 15 uh, S&P 500 is up five points. Currencies, yes, <laughs> early on before uh, the U.S. came in, gold was doing really well. Uh, the currencies were doing really well. Uh, gold got up to 1790 and then gold was sold off with silver, but the currency started continued to go higher. So the dollar is under pressure and continues to be so uh, this morning. We even have sterling back to 140. It's up 0.1 of a percent. Made a lot of gains yesterday. And uh, I was looking at a key support a, a week or so ago at 136.60. And it held that quite well. And we now rebounded. Uh, the euro is above 120. It's up a third of a percent overnight. It's almost at 121 now. It's at 120.75. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the yen at 108.32. Yes, and we've broken through 650 uh, in terms of Chinese U1. We're at uh, 648.90, down a quarter of a percent. Uh, high grade copper up 1% at 428. Uh, WTI crude up over 1% at 64.20 so all the commodities confirming also the weaker dollar because the weaker the dollar is uh, the stronger commodities are because commodities of course are priced in, in, in US dollars so to finish off the bond market yes we've seen yields pick up a little bit uh, since yesterday when I spoke we're now at 163 almost that's up about um, I would say eight basis points uh, uh, from when I spoke uh, yesterday morning. Overnight is up about two and a half basis points. So there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.